Hi, this is part 2 of my tutorial on the advanced parts of Embers Rekindled for 1.12.2. Here I will cover smithing, augments, and various advanced machinery and blocks. While the tools added are great, they can be improved and tweaked even more. All the tools and armor added are enchantable. Moreover, all equipment can be tinkered and repaired with at the Dawnstone Anvil. To repair items with the Dawnstone Anvil, all you have to do is get your damage item and right click it onto the anvil and then right-click the material it's made of onto the anvil on top of it. Then just get a tinker's hammer and hold right-click. You can also get the base materials back by just placing the item onto the anvil by itself and holding right-click on it with the tinker's hammer. There's a faster way to do this though. The automatic hammer hammers whatever is on the anvil when given a redstone signal. It requires a small amount of ember to do this, but it only takes one hit with the automatic hammer. I recommend using a button here as you don't want to accidentally break down your item. Moreover, transmutation can get you something called isolated materia, which acts as any tool's repair material. Finally, to apply the various special modifiers Embers adds, you'll need to apply an ancient motive core on your tool or armor first. This is done similarly to the way you repair it, in which you just put the tool down first and then the modifier you wish to add it and then hammer it down. Applying an ancient motive core allows your weapon to store heat, which acts as experience for the item. You can see this in the tooltip when hovering over the item. To raise the heat, all you have to do is use the item for what it's intended for. Tools that have ancient motive cores applied to them cannot be broken down into base materials. Once the bar is flashing, it's ready to be put into an Infernal Forge. The Infernal Forge is another one of those multi-block structures that spawn from one block. It requires a fair amount of ember and only accept it from the bottom center face, so you should make sure it's raised wherever you place it so it's easier to access. Fill your forge with ember and once your tool is ready to drop, drop it into the top compartment along with some ember crystals. The success of your tool leveling up is based on how many ember crystals are tossed in with it, but you shouldn't need to throw in more than 7 or so. For every heat level your item has, you can add one modifier, up to the maximum heat level of 5. Now that that is explained, let's actually get into the augments that can be added. The augments can be grouped into three types, armor augments, projectile augments, and weapon augments. I will now be going all over 16 effects in rapid succession, starting with armor. The Eldritch Insignia causes mobs to be afraid of you and avoid tacking unless provoked. The higher the level, the more mobs are affected. The Intelligent Apparatus boosts XP from killed mobs. The higher the level, the more bonus experience. The Flame Barrier lights mobs that attack you on fire. The higher the level, the more damage the fire does. The Cinder Jet causes you to do a quick dash whenever you start sprinting, however it requires Ember to do this. The higher the level, the further the dash. The Blasting Core causes an explosion that pushes back mobs when they attack you. The higher the level, the further the knockback. Shifting scales causes you to gain temporary HP, like the absorption effect when standing still. This armor will block external damage, but not damage from hunger or drowning. The higher the level, the higher the maximum absorption is.
A tinker lens makes it so you always see the information you would if you were holding a tinker lens. This can't be leveled up and doesn't take up a level slot, but will require the armor to have a motive core applied to it. Opposite to the augment is a smoky tinker lens, which negates the information provided by ashen goggles. Winding gears causes you to jump higher and further when applied to boots with a wound up tool in your hand. It also helps negate fall damage and overall makes you bouncier. Next are projectile augments. The diffraction pearl effectively turns the blasting ray and cinder staff into an ember shotgun. The higher the level, the greater the spread. The focal lens causes the blasting ray to pierce, and the cinder staff's fireball to home in on the nearest enemy. Higher levels increase piercing and homing distance respectively. And finally, tool augments. The superheater causes broken blocks and mob dropped items to be cooked. It also burns mobs on hit with the tool this has been applied to. This augment requires ember. Higher levels increase damage. The blasting core causes nearby blocks to break when you break a block and causes explosions to occur on attack. Explosion power increases with levels. The casting orb allows your tool to function like a single target cinder staff. Just attack with the tool or weapon and you will cast a projectile. This augment requires ember. Because this augment turns any tool into a projectile weapon, you can put projectile augments on tools with this augment too. Higher levels increase the size and damage of the projectile. The resonating bell makes it so that when right clicking a block, all nearby blocks of that type will resonate and be visible through walls. Higher levels increase the distance of visibility. Winding Gears allows you to wind up your tool. By doing this, you can just hold right click and your tool or weapon will automatically swing for max damage. Higher levels allow you to wind up your tool more. You need to use this if you want to use Winding Gears on boots. Now it's finally time to get into the more advanced machines that require transmutation and some other logistics I failed to mention until now. The highest form of ember production requires three separate machines. There's the two chambers, the combustion chamber and catalysis chamber, and the ignum reactor. The ignum reactor should connect to the top halves of both chambers. The way it works is you feed each chamber their corresponding fuel, and depending on what fuel you use, the ignum reactor could generate ember with up to nine times efficiency. The combustion chamber can burn coal, nether bricks, and blaze dust, which have multipliers of two, three, and four. The catalysis chamber can burn redstone dust, gunpowder, and glowstone dust, which also have multipliers of 2, 3, and 4. The ignum reactor adds the multipliers together, plus 1, to determine its ember generation. If the two fuel multipliers aren't close enough to each other, the reactor will do nothing. Just pipe in the appropriate fuels into each chamber, and the ignum reactor will start working as soon as it's given ember crystals or shards. Through transmutation, you can get metal seeds. Metal seeds produce nuggets of its same type when placed next to an ember injector that's receiving ember. You can gauge the progress of the nugget production by the crystal-like things that orbit around the metal seed. Once it receives enough ember, it will drop the nuggets into the world. While you could use either a bin or a hopper to collect this, this is a good opportunity to mention some more advanced logistics. First off, the item vacuum is a block which sucks in nearby items it is facing. Since it has no internal inventory, it needs to be connected to pipes or a chest, otherwise it'll drop whatever item back out into the world. Opposite to the item vacuum, we have the item dropper, which drops whatever item is piped into it. If you want to increase the control you have with your pipes, you should consider using item and fluid transfers. 
These blocks act as a filter and have the highest priority in any pipe system. To set the filter, right click the transfer with the item you'd like it to pull exclusively. This does not consume the item. To remove the filter, just right click it with an empty hand. To sell filters with fluid transfers, you right click it with the bucket of the fluid you want to filter. Next we have two machine upgrades. These blocks affect productivity and efficiency. This is the Wildfire Sterling, which when placed onto a machine and fed steam will reduce ember cost by half. Then we have the Catalectic Plug, which doubles the speed of a machine but requires alchemical slurry to be fed to it. Alchemical slurry is created by putting redstone into a melter. You cannot put more than two of each of these on any one machine. And one last final thing I've yet to mention are merge box frames. Where gearbox frames have one input face and five output faces, merge box frames are the opposite and have five input faces and only one output face. It will merge the mechanical energy and combine it into the single output face. And that's it. That's really everything there is in Embers Rekindled. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and if it did turn out that I missed something, be sure to let me know. Thanks for watching.